This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the fastest and easiest place to build your photography website. I wanted to make sure that the camera would sync with my audio. I've spent the last week in the mountains with an Icon Z6 II. And as of the, the moment of recording this, Adobe still cannot support the RAW files. So if you are here to figure out how to, use, I'll put a link in the description below. My friend Liam Good made a video and basically use a program called Meta Image to just rename any files that come out of here to be a regular Z6 file, which is kind of an incorrect way to handle things because you're just interpreting this file as something else. So you might be losing data, but in my experience so far, it has not been a problem. In fact, um, I've even printed, mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how to display a print of this size. I'm behind the print now. From my estimations and the level of detail that I can see, so this is an image that was converted through meta image that was then uh, just edited as a Z6 raw file. And the level of detail is really, really incredible. I would suspect that I could honestly print this file probably up to 80. 90 inches for somewhat close viewing. Um, this is a combination of both the sensor as well as the glass and just everything that goes into the Z6 II. So very, very well done. Uh, more to come with this. Actually, everything you're gonna see in the video, there is, there's a lot more to come with it. Um, this is kind of a precursor to the, to the bigger video that might be the best video that I've ever made. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. The first thing that I wanna talk about, um, this is Red Bull if you're, if you're wondering. Thought I'd put it in a glass to make it fancier. First thing I want to talk about is the weather sealing of this camera and how well it did. We went out into pretty much the worst conditions you could imagine. And I didn't really think twice about protecting my camera. We were out there, we were getting amazing shots. It wasn't something that was like, oh no, we need to like put a plastic bag over this or I should have brought some sort of protective device. This camera got covered completely in snow and ice. And that was the first day. So we were there the first day we absolutely pretty much rang both of these cameras to their absolute, well, I don't even know if it's the absolute limit. And for myself personally, I've experienced like maybe a little bit of water on cameras from time to time, but I've never really pushed them to that level of the limit. To give you a little more detail, um, basically like within, I guess this is maybe a, a compliment to both the lenses and the camera bodies. The, the camera, like obviously lots of snow kind of everywhere here, um, but there is actually ice built up on the, the front of the focus ring here. And it just, didn't affect performance at all for the remainder of the trip. So really, really great combination. Um, one thing that I would probably maybe recommend you stay away from is if you are in those environments, make sure the lenses that you put on your cameras on the way out the door or the way out your car are the ones that are going to stay there. Don't be trying to change lenses out in environments like this. Um, and then also be aware of your humidity level. So if you're running from freezing conditions into inside, don't just think that like, hey, now I'm safe because I'm inside, I can switch lenses, that there are humidity shifts and things that might happen. For pretty much the entire trip, I was using this, this is the Z6 II with the Rode uh, NTG video mic, NTG, I guess, on top of it. And pretty much everything that we recorded ended up being as a main camera, this 24 to 70. It really just kind of did everything. It's my favorite lens for the Z series and pretty much like I would say a good reason if you are on the fence and you're like, oh, like I have a Nikon digital SLR or I'm, I'm looking at the Z series. This kit specifically is something that I would recommend as just kind of like a main kit for just in general, if you want to get into wildlife photos, obviously you're going to need something else, but um, for general travel photography, for even portrait photography, for wedding photography, you can really do a lot just with this, this single kit here. With me, I also brought the 70 to 200 and the two-time teleconverter. So the two-time teleconverter, uh, you lose two stops of light, but you add double the range. So the 70 to 200, I think as of right now, is the only lens that you can use it on. I'm sure there's there's more to come. Uh, 70 to 200 is a 2.8, so it becomes an f 5.6. But with that 5.6, you now have a 140 to 400, um, which is a very useful range when you're out in the field. Um, another benefit of Nikon, and this might even speak to the Z7 II, which will be coming out shortly, um, is that if you are shooting in DX mode, so if you're going to crop mode on the camera, you're gaining 1.5 times additional reach. So if I'm on that 70 to 200 with a two time teleconverter, and then I wanna do some video of some animals way over there, I can crop into DX mode and I can get 600 millimeters of reach at HD uh, to get those, those animals, those, those moose way out there in the distance. With the Z7 II, the reason that I mention it is because it's a higher megapixel camera overall. So when you go into crop mode, I'm not sure what the math will actually be. Uh, the way that it works out, DX mode on this comes down to 10 megapixels, which is a bit unfortunate. It's, it's usable. Um, again, 26 megapixel 
probably comfortable printing up to like 80 inches, maybe even more. 10 megapixel file maybe won't be doing anything as large, but when you go over to the Z7 II and you bring that 40 plus megapixel sensor into DX mode, I'm hoping that you're maybe getting a 20 plus megapixel file. Someone could comment below if you have a Z7, the original one. Um, if you could tell me what the megapixels are in DX mode, I would really appreciate that because I had a quick look online and I could not find anything, unfortunately. So that would be super helpful. I thank you in advance. I also brought two other lenses that I didn't really end up using as much as I wanted to really. Um, basically the, the situation, as I mentioned in the beginning, that you go out into the world and you're in these hostile environments and you really can't change lenses. So unless you're really preparing to use a super wide uh, or the 20 millimeter prime, it's probably not gonna be defaulted on your camera. So the 14 to 24 f 2.8 super wide is a phenomenal, phenomenal lens. After dark, it is also phenomenal. Uh, I brought the 20 millimeter f 1.8 Z prime as well. In the past, the the, the 20 1.4 for digital SLR has always been kind of my beginner astro lens that I can get away. I can get the I can get the wide shot. I can't get the nebula shot with it, but I can get a wide shot. I can show a little bit of the foreground and get some nice stars. And for the for the footprint of it, I've absolutely loved it for years and years and years. Now going into the Z series, the new Z 20 millimeter f 1.8 is definitely one that I just wanted to have in my bag. Um, I am personally very torn between having the super wide, the 14 to 24 2.8 versus the 20 millimeter. Um, I'm still personally making my decision on that. I find that most of the stuff, because I, I don't photograph a whole lot of architecture or anything that really necessitates a super high quality 14 millimeter. Well, the 14 to 24 is an absolutely phenomenally amazing lens. I don't know if it's going to be the one that I'm going to be keeping. So I will likely keep the 20 uh, as kind of my, again, like that beginner astro lens that when you're just out there and you see some stars or northern lights or whatever, you just want to capture them. Um, this is getting a little bit wider from my 24, which we brought on season one of the Around the World with Taylor Jackson. It's weird to pronounce my own name in this, comma presented by Nikon. Uh, when we got Northern Light shots, it was always the 24 pretty much on my camera or even the 14 to 30. Um, so there's some controversy between the, I guess the, the super wide because the, the thread mount, well, one, I don't think companies support it yet. If you have a glass plate filter system, there's a pretty good chance that they might be one of the first ones to make an adapter for it. But to get a 112 millimeter screw on filter is going to be very expensive. So what I've kind of realized is that a lot of people are still sticking with the 14 to 30 F4 because you can just put little screw on filters that are relatively inexpensive. And in our experience, shooting Northern Lights with the 14 to 30 actually worked out really, really well. Um, the high ISO in the original Z6, which is what these sample images are from, performed really, really phenomenally well. So I can only imagine it's going to get even better in the Nikon Z6 II when I can finally finally see the, the real raw files. So the super wide worked out really well. The 20 really just kind of came through as that small prime. And as a run and gun style, uh, like vlog lens, um, I love using the 20 because you essentially, you get a 20, which is wide enough to self film that you can get enough of the space around you. At 24, um, I will use this from time to time. Here's an example of me self filming with the 24. It's good enough, but those extra four millimeters when you're at a distance of whatever your hand is, uh, really, really helpful, I think. And then looping back to the beginning that you can go into DX mode. So you can be on that 20 millimeter lens. You can pop into DX mode all of a sudden you're at 30 millimeters, which is great for just kind of capturing a slightly different field of view, but still staying with that small footprint of that 20 millimeter prime. To speak to the ergonomics and the usability of the camera in general, it really is designed correctly. I feel like everything makes sense. Everything is easy to find if you're it's for instance, we're doing astrophotography and where it's just dark out and I want to adjust some settings in the dark and everything is really easy to find. And then another thing that I'm not sure if this is an official thing or what it is, but I left, uh, I accidentally left the image stabilization on while tripod doing astro and it didn't actually blur the image. Usually in that circumstance, like things tend to go a little bit weird, but I think it knew that it was on a tripod and it was just, it kind of disabled it. So I feel like there's another level of just it, the camera being really intuitive. Um, in a landscape environment, like we were, I guess wildlife as well, uh, the autofocus really did keep up. I know that that had been a huge complaint for years and years and years with the Z6 original. And I think in these environments, it 100% keeps up. I didn't do too many portraits of people while we were out there, or if we were, it was kind of a person involved in a landscape. So it wasn't necessarily portraiture, but I will have some full wedding days eventually coming up with this camera. So 
subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing those. The files that come off of this camera, even though I am converting them through a third party to not even use the real full file, the, the full potential of it, um, up against, so Alex was out with his A7R3, which I know isn't necessarily the 100%, I would say that, that came out in 2017, 2018 maybe. Um, I know that it's not exactly like, it's not a fair comparison, or maybe it is because the original Z6, the sensor is the same, so maybe similar. We got this one photo from a lake that there really wasn't anything like it was a full proper blizzard and you can kind of see the outline of the lake i dragged the the dehaze in lightroom all the way up to 100 which i never do and the file just took it and it was like yeah here's your photo and in comparison alex actually ran his through lightroom and he said that he got pretty much absolutely nothing that the file just really didn't it, it wouldn't take nearly as much of um, the processing as, as this file did here so uh, i think a shout out just in general to the nikon files I think that the color palette is, is one of my favorite color palettes from any camera manufacturer. Specifically, I shoot a lot of the time on either shade or the house shade mode. I don't know, cloudy versus shade. So I guess I'm on shade, house, shade lines. Um, I shoot a lot of time on that for portraits and weddings. Uh, I just find that it adds a level of warmth to an image that I just really, really like a lot. I, I would say most of the time, pretty much 90% of the time, the JPEG on the back of the camera is pretty much what I want to edit the raw file to be, um, which means in a lot of cases, I'm actually just using the JPEG if you're seeing Instagram photos. I would say it's a 50-50 chance, especially if we're out traveling, um, that I'm actually just using the JPEG, just pulling that off the camera and just doing a quick Instagram edit from there. If I am printing something like this to, to put up in a gallery, um, obviously raw file, process it properly for big print, but I would honestly, maybe this is a future video note to self to, to print a JPEG versus the processed raw file and to see which one, like how they're different because I've never experimented with that, especially on such a, a large scale like this. So overall it has been, I guess I've had this camera for about a month, including kind of the pre-production model that I had before this. And I have really just absolutely enjoyed this camera. Thank you so much for watching today and thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace, the fastest and easiest place for you to build your photography website. If you're a photographer, you need a website, you can, you can go to squarespace.com slash Taylor Jackson and you can get 10% off. Uh, start your free trial, build out your website, make sure it's for you. I, I promise that it is for you. It's also a lot easier to build a site than, than you might think. Building from their templates is great because they work on every device, whether you're on a computer or your phone, which is like 65% of my traffic now, or an iPad or um, any other device that might come out in the future that your website is just gonna be good on it. And it's not gonna be on you to go in and edit it, that it's just gonna happen. And just, they're, they're the ghost in your, your photography business machine. So head over to squarespace.com slash Taylor Jackson for 10% off and start your free trial today. Thank you so much for listening to my talking from this table. I am going to be giving you many, many videos from the footage you've just seen. One of my favorite videos ever to come 100%. Maybe, maybe the best video that I've ever made. I'm very excited for it. I don't want to hype it up in my brain because if it doesn't end up coming together as well as I want to, I'll be kind of upset. But as of right now, things are coming together. Life is good. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed and uh, like this video. Maybe that'd be nice too. Drop any questions you have about the Nikon Z62 in the comments below, and I will be happy to get back to you. And I'm really hoping by the time that this video comes out, Adobe has updated their, their Lightroom so I can finally use the files. It's kind of, it's, it's, it's been long enough. It's been long enough, I think.